Due to no fault of mine, I have recently lost a Mario Kart match and a bet to my colleague, who shall remain nameless. So, as a punishment, I am to deliver a video with a Mario suit. Since today is April the 1st, it felt befitting to honor the bet. But let's cut to the chase. In this video, we will talk about interactive clock that follows your computer's time and has hourly triggers shooting inspirational messages from some of the greatest cultural icons. Okay, let's talk about this rig. There are several things I would like to highlight. And in order for the conversation to be easier, I have the things that I want to highlight separated as a stripped down versions or smaller uh, rigs. So first of all, we have a model of a deer rigged with bones that is continuously looping in the center. And there is a ton of image planes attached to it. So we're going to talk about that. Then we have a clock setup. And we're going to talk about how to rig up a clock. And then we're going to talk about how do you set hourly triggers for that clock to play through every single time. The clock strikes one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forward. So let's start with this part, the 3D model and image planes attached to it. Obviously, if I open now the skeletal structure of this model, it looks like spaghetti. So it's going to be very complex to talk about it. As mentioned, let's just go to a simplified version. So here we have a FBX model that has a bone structure and some of the bones has image planes attached to it. It could be image planes attached, it could be 3D models, it could be nulls uh, that are driving some kind of a follows. It's just a very nice way to make things interactive or move together with the rig. So for instance here I'm attaching a shape 3D. So for this specific rig I just went with a ton of image planes and I spread them out all across the bone structure of this deer model. I'm not a big fan of cutting out backgrounds from the images, so I found this neat little website that has a ton of PNGs with transparent backgrounds. Uh, I think it's probably worth it to give it a shout. And that little website is called PNGX, so basically anything you, you desire or you want, likely they have something on that subject. So all you have to do is just search the subject of your interest. You can see the information of its size. You click on it and it's there available for you. It's downloaded. All you have to do then is just drag it into the resources and for instance, replace this video loader. Well, let's just rotate it around. So it's a neat little website and I use it quite often. I suggest you check it out too. I left the link in the description area. So this is quite easy. I don't think we need to spend too much time here. It's literally bones and you attach things to bones and you do it to your liking until you build something that you're happy about. So with that said, let's move on to the next layer, which is a clock setup. So fortunately, you don't have to build this from scratch every time you want to enable a clock in Notch. This right here is actually available as a template. So if I call out a new layer, you will see that there's template tab. And this right here is the exact clock that I'm using for this example here. Let me talk you through the different points here and how does it actually work. Well, first of all, we have a little bit of geometry. So there's a torus and a shape 3D marking the outer rim and the center of the graph. I'm gonna enable the grid so we see it better. And obviously all things clock related are spawning from one null so you can easily offset it in 3D space or move it around to your liking. And then we have uh, this small rig right here. So there's three nulls. They're all set to their default values. They're literally living in the center of the graph. And from these nulls, there are shape 3Ds spawning. So I'm going to disable the clock time modifier just for a second and you will see exactly what's going on. So as mentioned, all these nulls are left to their default and uh, these shape 3Ds are just offset a tiniest bit on their position X value. So basically a little bit further from the center. And what drives their position when they are rotating is uh, this clock time modifier. And as you see, we have three of them. And that is because the first one is driving the seconds, the other one is driving minutes, and the third one is driving the hours. So in the clock time modifier, you can actually choose what do you want to output as value? Should it be seconds, minutes, hours? And there's of course a couple of other options and we're gonna discuss them a little bit later, but basically here we're using seconds as rotation, minutes, and hours. 
And then you have options on what time do you want to count. So you can set in your own time if you want to build a countdown, for instance, or you can use systems clock time. That's exactly what I'm doing here. So you have a setup for seconds, for minutes, and for hours. And that's pretty much it. It's rather simple to rig up a clock in Notch. So let's move on to the last point of interest, hourly triggers. So this rig right here, with uh, several modifiers and a couple of image planes, is replicated in my original design 12 times. So when we're going to be talking about this, just bear in mind that I replicated this rig 12 times over because I wanted different messages to be triggered by different hours. So let me just explain what does uh, these modifiers trigger. Well, basically we have an image plane with a small fractal noise for the background and we have a couple of text nodes. So first text node is shooting out an inspirational message and the second one is just stating who is the author of that inspirational message. I've spent a lot of time looking for these inspirational messages. Do check them out. I find them very inspiring. Anyway, so this is the design that we are triggering and we are triggering that design by this small rig right here. So basically we're taking clock time modifier with a mode set to hours as 12 hour value. We'll come back to that. We're sending it to a condition modifier that checks what hour is being sent. And that condition modifier then is working as a trigger with a couple of keyframes that I set in a triggerable envelope that shoots out this five second animation of quote coming in, quote coming out. Right, so with that said, clock time modifier. Uh, as I mentioned before, it has quite a few values. We've discussed the seconds, minutes, and hours as rotation. Here I'm using hours as 12 hour value. So basically with this property chosen or with this mode chosen, I can build a little system that will have 12 different triggers for 12 different animations to happen. In this case, this is just one of them. As I mentioned before, you can have 12 or even 24 of them if you choose so. So how does this work? We are taking this value from the clock time modifier and we're sending it to a condition modifier. So condition modifier has a threshold. So threshold corresponds with an hour that we want to work as a trigger. So for instance, I want this message to appear on my screen at two o'clock. So I'm setting two as a threshold. Important thing to remember here, you need to change the trigger condition to equal to threshold. So anytime clock time modifier sends value of two, this node knows that, ah, this is a trigger for me. Now, in between, we're using a quantize modifier, and that is just because I'm a fan of quantizing values before they reach the destination. In this case, I wanted uh, this value to be rounded up to 0 0.25 precision. It's not needed, but I tend to use it. Very much your choice if you want to have uh, this step in between the clock time and condition modifier. So, once you set up the time that you want to work with, in this case, two o'clock for me in the threshold, and you set the trigger condition to equal to threshold, now you can send that information or that trigger to a triggerable envelope modifier. So what does this node do? Well, basically it allows you to trigger keyframe animations that you've made or set up. So in my case, I am triggering a four keyframe animation that I set here in a value property. So if I jump to the timeline view, you will see that there's four keyframes. So basically the first keyframe is set to zero and it corresponds with the start of the timeline. Then one second in, it gives a value of one. So it's triggered. It stays on for five seconds and then it goes out to a zero again on the six second marker. So with this condition modifier, we're triggering uh, this six second animation. I can actually showcase this much nicer with the just a regular envelope. Let's just see it playing through. So let's reset it. And this envelope modifier now is working as a replacement for the condition modifier. Because sitting here for an hour and waiting for this trigger to actually do its job is going to be very counterproductive. So my timeline is running. And when I grab this envelope modifier and shoot it or send information, animation plays through. And it's playing through this six second keyframe setup that I pre-made.
So we're triggering this animation manually by changing the value from 0 to 1 on this envelope. But let's connect back the condition modifier and leave it connected. So let's rewind a little bit and let's talk through the chain again. So we have clock time modifier that is sending 12 hour values. So it's corresponding with 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forward. And whenever we reach 2 o'clock on whenever this clock time modifier spits out 2, this condition modifier knows that it's a call or action for it to do its job. So it checks in with the clock time modifier, it sees that it's sending two and its threshold is two. So if it's equal to threshold, it sends a signal to a triggerable envelope. Triggerable envelope plays through the six second animation. And that six second keyframe animation is something that we use to enable these two envelopes to be active or inactive. So whenever this modifier plays through the four keyframes that we've set, these four keyframes then are used as triggers for these envelopes. And this envelope right here enables the image plane to be visible as it's connected to the alpha. And uh, this one right here enables it to change its position Z. So basically it's behind camera as a default. And then as soon as it gets that trigger, it slides in to the screen. Let's see. There we go. I hope this all makes sense. I left some comments here explaining every single point of this uh, chain step by step. So if I didn't make sense when I was explaining it, you have a reference there and it should assist you in dissecting the setup. So for a second now, I'm just going to roll back to the main setup and I'm just going to mention that uh, here we have a 3D deer with a lot of image planes attached. Uh, here we have the very clock that we've spoken about in the step two. And here we have uh, the very setup where we just talked about. It's just, it's replicated 12 times. So it has 12 different messages and the condition modifiers are calling out the specific message corresponding to a specific hour that clock time modifier spits out. Right, and with that said, I think we're done with this rig. I hope you're happy, Ryan. I deserve this punishment. You're the king of the hill, man of the hour. Your skills are unmatchable for now. And for the rest of you good people, thank you for watching and see you next time.